Good morning. Okay. Um, this is a quick tour on Revit systems. Um, we're going to cover a lot of kind of the high level functionality that's available in Revit systems today. Um, as we're going through presenting, please feel free to ask questions. Let us know if you have any questions. Throw a shoe at us, something. So feel free to ask questions at any time. All, we'll also hope to have some time at the end of the session for any general questions we have. Um, I'm Jason Martin. I'm a product designer with Autodesk working on Revit systems. Um, this is Ed Deal, and I'll let him tell a little bit about himself. Um, I'm a, a technical specialist with the uh, Building Solutions Division. Uh, primarily my role is to meet with customers and help them to figure out what's going to be the best solution for them and their firms to move forward in the industry, uh, to be more successful, more profitable. Uh, but before I joined Autodesk, I was actually a project manager for a medium-sized AE firm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we were about uh, 70, 80 people at the time. I managed about uh, 50 to 60 projects a year for a little retail outlet out of Bentonville, Arkansas. Anybody want to guess who that is? Walmart. Walmart, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, the point is to that is that you can imagine that 50 to 60 projects, when you think about it, that's more than one a week. And so I dealt every day with trying to get designs completed, working with architects and engineers, code officials, building owners, building contractors, everything you can imagine get it built. And so uh, what I, when I talk about something like Revit Systems or any of our products, I always look at it from the perspective of, how is it going to help you get your job done more effectively? Because, you know, if it's got bells and whistles, that's great, but how can this really help you? And so hopefully today we'll be able to walk out of here with a little bit of that. Okay, so for some housekeeping. If anyone's interested in AIA credits, there are some forms floating around. Be sure and get your name on it and be sure and get me the form at the end of class, okay? I think I saw one over there if anybody's interested. Um, I need to have your name on that form if you want AIA credits, and I have to show this. So there's that one, and so we're going to cover the Revit interface. Um, just a question, how many people are actually using or trying to use Revit systems today? Well, how many people haven't seen Revit systems? Okay. So we'll cover, cover a little bit on the interface. Um, we'll cover one method of setting up a project and kind of a project workflow. There are multiple methods. We're going to cover one of them. Um, and everybody always starts with mechanical and duct work and piping, so I'm doing the opposite and starting with electrical. And, <laughs> and then we'll cover some mechanical and piping tools. And so we'll start with the interface. So I have systems running here. Um, so there are some very basic items in all of the Revit interface products. So starting off, it's a, it's a standard Windows application. Pull down menus just like most every other Windows application in the world. There's also a set of toolbars. Um, there's a special toolbar that we call the, what do we call it? Options bar. Thank you. Drew a complete blank. Options bar, which will change depending on what we're doing specifically. Um, there's also a set of what we call design panes, so there are different tools for each different discipline here. This is what we call the project browser. It's where we access all of our views, sheets, families, all the things that are in the project that we're working on. And then there's one additional window that's only in Revit systems. You won't see it in any of the other Revit products, but it's called the system browser. Um, it's kind of similar to the project browser, but it's specifically for the mechanical, electrical, plumbing kind of things that are in the project. Okay? All right. Um, so, we'll start off with setting up our project. So, I've started with just a blank systems template right now. And what I'm going to do, there, there are two different workflows you can use when working with the architects that are working on the project. Um, Revit supports a single building model, so everybody can be working in the same file, mechanical, electrical, architects, structural people, all working in the same file. There's also a workflow that we call using linked files, which is similar to XREFs in AutoCAD, and that's what I'm going to show today is the linked file workflow. So I'm just going to link in my architectural file. To do that, I'm going to go and just link in a Revit file, and I happen to have one handy. 
So similar, very similar to the way it works in AutoCAD. When I bring this in, this is one kind of big block. It's a link. I can't really get to anything. There's no real data there. Um, so one of the things that I need to do is get some of the data into my file. So I'm going to use what we call copy monitor. And I'll just click it from the toolbar. And it asks me, I'm going to pick the link that I want to copy and monitor objects from. So I'll select this one. And you can see that the design panes change. So now I'm kind of in a special mode where I'm doing specific things about this particular function I'm doing. So it's only copy monitor functions that I have access to right now. So the thing that I really need to get from the linked file into my project is the room definitions, OK? Because the room definitions are something that's really critical to Revit systems. We add a lot of data to rooms. We manage data about rooms and all that kind of stuff. So if I don't get the room definitions into my project, there's a lot of functionality that's lost, OK? So I can click Copy Rooms right now, and it's going to tell me, no, you can't do that. There are a couple other options that I have to set before I can actually copy the rooms. So if I go into Options, <clears throat> there are some options for levels, grid, columns, walls, floors, and rooms, OK? So on the last page is Rooms, and what I need to do is I need to match my phases. So there's a phasing feature in Revit, which we're not going to really cover today, but I need to specify what phases I want the rooms to copy from, OK? So in this case, I'm going to select new construction is going to be equal to new construction. That's the only phase I care about. We're not doing a renovation in this case, so I don't have anything that's actually in existence, OK? So all I want is new construction. So I'm going to say OK there. And then there's one more step that I have to take. Um, all of the rooms in Revit exist on a level. There's a concept of levels, which is similar to floors. The rooms all have a level assigned to them. So for me to get the rooms into my project, I need to have the same levels as the architectural project does. So I'm just going to switch to a section view. And I'm going to click Copy here. And I'm going to go in and copy the levels that I want from the linked file. So you'll see the levels in my local file move to match those levels. Okay. So basically what I've done is I've said, OK, whatever levels are in the architectural file, make my levels equal to those. OK? So if those levels move, if the architect decides to change where the roof is, I'll get notified, hey, the roof moved up or down or whichever way. OK? So I'm making my levels match the architect's levels. OK? So now I can click Copy Rooms, and it tells me 15 rooms were copied. So it basically copied the room definitions from the architectural model into my MEP file. And I can go ahead and click on Finish Mode here, and I'll go back to a plan view. So now there are actually rooms in my file. I can pick this room. I can get properties for this room. Um, some of the things that you'll see are things like name and number are already assigned because the architect assigned them, and they're read-only in my copy. I don't want to have their room number one be my room number 33. So some of those things are already assigned and they're already set up in my local file. Let me uh, kind of expand on this just a little bit. If you think about, um, first of all, how many people are MEP based? How many are architects? Okay, we're gonna make fun of you two guys for a minute. That's right, that's right, <laughs> comically. So the idea is, is that he did copy, I mean, just like you would in a CAD world, right? He x the architect's model in, that was his background, started to, starting his design. Well, with copy monitoring, we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually taking something out of that file that we linked in, and it's now live in our file here. But there's a unique advantage that Revit Systems provides in this workflow, and that's the idea that we've established a relationship between these two objects. So even this file that the architects provided us, everything exists there. We've copied it in ours. Now there's two separate objects. They're actually linked together. And the real benefit for us on the MEP side of it is that as the change occurs, which we know you guys don't ever change late project, right? But as that change occurs, that relationship's going to help us out, and you're going to see that much later. But I think it's important to point out that while we copied that stuff in, we have actually established a relationship between the two. Yes? Okay, well, that's a completely different workflow. This is Revit to 